All right, everybody, go ahead and take your seats. Make sure you have anything that's not a Bible, pen, or notebook underneath your seat. We're going to go ahead and get started. So once you're done, we'll go ahead and fold our hands, bow our heads, and close our eyes. Let's pray. God, we thank you for this evening. We thank you again for blessing us with another hour of Awana. We pray, Lord, for your blessing over this time as we discuss uh, creation, how you started this whole universe, and we thank you, God, that you decided to create this universe. And so I pray, Lord, that as you give us the ears and hearts and minds to focus on tonight's lesson, that we'll be able to apply it to our lives and that we'll be confident in what we believe in that you began the universe. So we thank you and praise you in your name. Amen. All right. Well, tonight we're going to be doing something a little bit different. We're going to be starting out with a video, uh, just recapping what we already know about creation, the six, to seven, the six days of creation, and then the seventh day where God rested, and we're going to go in from there. So first, the video. Stories of the Bible. Creation. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was empty, formless, and dark. But the Spirit of God was there. On the first day, God said, let there be light. And God saw that the light was good. Then he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day and the darkness night. On the second day, God said, let there be a space to separate the waters of the heavens from the waters of the earth. God called the space sky. On the third day, God said, let the waters beneath the sky flow together into one place so dry ground may appear. God called the dry ground land and the waters seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the land sprout with every sort of plant and tree. And God saw that it was good. On the fourth day, God said, let lights appear in the sky to separate the day from the night. God made two great lights, the sun for the day and the moon for the night. He also made the stars. God set these lights in the sky to light the earth and God saw that it was good. On the fifth day, God said, let the waters swarm with fish and other life. Let the skies be filled with birds of every kind, and God saw that it was good. On the sixth day, God said, let the earth make every sort of animal. God made all sorts of wild animals, livestock and small animals, each able to have babies of the same kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make man in our image to be like us. So God created man in his own image. He formed man from the dust of the ground. He breathed the breath of life into man and a man became alive. Then he saw that the man needed a helper, so God put man into a deep sleep, and while he slept, God took one of the man's ribs, then God made a woman from the rib and brought her to the man. Uh -oh. Hi. Then God blessed them and said, Be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and rule over it, rule over the fish in the sea, oh, yeah. the birds in the sky, oh, and all the animals that scurry along the ground. <laughs> then God said, Look, I have given you every plant throughout the earth, and all the fruit trees for your food, and I have given you every green plant as food for all the animals. Then God looked over all he had made, and he saw that it was very good. So the creation of the heavens and the earth, and everything in them, was done. So on the seventh day, God rested from all his work, and God blessed the seventh day and said it was holy. All right. 
well, let me hold on one second while I just swap over computers. PowerPoint on one video on the other. So now we're going to talk about first discussing the five questions about the universe. And the first one we're going to be discussing tonight is the first question on how did we get here? Now, obviously, since we just watched the video, we can see that God created the heavens and the earth. He created everything. He created the universe. But there's something different about him, how God created the universe and how God created mankind. And the first thing to know about the whole thing is that God did it on purpose. What some of you may have heard about evolution and other uh, religions out there is, well, particularly evolution, is that it's all an accident. You're an accident. I'm an accident. The cre whole of creation is an accident. And there's no purpose. There's no meaning. There's no value. There's no rhyme or reason. We just happened because we had the smallest chance of our molecules bouncing off together and then multiplying and all these things and that and from that we have today however based on scripture based off of genesis based off of what we see that god had made the heavens and the earth god had made the animals god had made the universe so what's some differences and similarities between what god had made creation and man. Now, obviously, God created man, but I'm going to separate mankind from creation just for a moment because it's important because the way that he interacts with the rest of creation and how he makes mankind is different. So the first thing, if you notice, is in Genesis 1 and 2, God had spoke everything else into existence. God said, let there be light. God said, let there be dry land, let there be animals, let there be plants. God spoke everything into existence. However, when he gets to man on the sixth day, what does God do? He doesn't say, let there be mankind and let there be Adam or let there be Eve. No. As we saw in the video, God created him. God made him. The words there, it's like he constructed him. He used his hands to like mold Adam. But then he doesn't stop there. He then breathes his own breath into Adam's nostrils, into his soul. And he became a living soul from God's own breath. You don't see God doing that with other animals or the trees or even the fish or birds. You, you see that he just speaks them into existence, which makes you wonder... Why did he do that differently? Now, obviously, from Eve, he also created her from the rib that he took from Adam. Next is that create the reasons why God created them. The first with creation is that God made creation for man. He basically gave them a gift. He wrapped the universe up and said, here, I'm giving this to you to enjoy. Enjoy the fruit of the trees, except for the one that I'm going to tell you not to eat from. But, you know, you're going to name all these things. Now, some of you would think, hey, you know, Adam gets this perfect life in the Garden of Eden, well, before the fall. So he must have, you know, totally you know, laid back. It was a permanent vacation. It's like, no. God basically went, hey, Adam, I got 360,000 acres of land for you. I want you to mow it. <laughs> That'd be a lot of work, although it was a perfect world. But he created everything for man. However, when he makes man, you hear that he says, <laughs> and we wanted to make man in our own image. And that's when he brings up man. Now, God could have been perfectly content with just making creation and forget about man, but God also wanted a relationship with us. And ultimately, everything's for his glory, but we were made for God. We were made to enjoy God's presence, enjoy God's uh, relationship with us. I mean, God walked through the garden with Adam until we mess things up, but we're not going to get to that today. So creation was made for man, but we were made for God. You heard him. All these things I give to you, Adam. 
All these things I give to you. The next thing is, again, the job aspect of it, creation was supposed to be cared for by us. Even before the fall, he says, hey, listen, I, you're to tend to this. You're supposed to be taking care of this garden. You're supposed to be taking care of all these things. Now, back then, he wouldn't have had thorns or weeds or thistles to, or, you know, those prickers that we have to deal with now. Everything would have been perfect back then, but even things perfect back before the fall, Adam still had a job to do. He still had a full creation to take care of that. God said, hey, I want you to take care of this, but you're not going to do it alone. And that's why he also created Eve, because he said, it's not good that man should be alone. So then he created man, and we're going to be cared for by God. We see that in Matthew, and we're going to talk about Matthew 6 in a little bit, but we are to be cared for by God, and we are cared for by God. Not based on our wants, because if that was it, then I probably would have a better car, bigger house, but God cares for our needs, and what those needs are, uh, we'll discuss that at some other point. But now let's look at some similarities between uh, God's creation of creation and man. Both were made with purpose. Again, this isn't, we're not made by accident. It's not like a, oops, oh, well, you guys are here, or oops, I'm here. We were made, we were fearfully and wonderfully made, sewn together, for man anyways. And then creation, the start of all the universe was not an accident. God made it with purpose. God bestowed purpose on it. The second thing is that each was made with value. Just as a painter, as he paints a picture, like if they painted the background of this, or if you look around the classroom, we're in the art room, you can see a lot of pictures in here. The people who made that have bestowed value on that. I mean, if you went up to the pictures, don't do it, but if you went up to the pictures and ripped them in half, the person who made those are going to be extremely upset because it is valuable to them. And just as God had made all of the creation and the universe and also made us, we are valuable. We are not worthless. Now that's not to give us pride to say, oh yeah, I'm worth something. But it's to be a comfort to know that we're not an accident. We're not worthless. It's not like we're the same value as ants or the dirt or trees. We're set apart from that because God gave us that value. We're not worthless. We're not on equal terms with the animals that you see in a zoo. And the similarities between this is that, unlike the paintings you see in this room, is that we were given our purpose and our values by God. The same goes with creation. And because we were given our purpose and our values by God, it is only God who can change those. It is only God that can uh, take those away. And I'm glad that he's not going to. Somebody else can't take away your purpose. Someone else can't say, hey, you know what? You're worthless. I mean, they can say that. And it'll be hurtful and mean. But that doesn't mean that you are. Some of us uh, may have been told while we were younger or yesterday or even this morning that you're worthless, but God says otherwise. And God sent his son to prove otherwise. What does John 3, 16 say? For God so loved the world, which means you and me, that he gave his only begotten son. God proved his love for us, and he wouldn't have done that for ants. In fact, he didn't. He didn't do it for frogs. He didn't for the, do it for the birds. He did it for us, for mankind. So, Don't get depressed. You're, you are valuable. And that value was given by God. So let's read real quick in Genesis 1. And if you have your Bibles, you can turn there or you can look up here. But Genesis 1, 1 through 2 says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form.